What's up, YouTube? This is part two of the hip-hop CD update that I made on, I think, November 6th. Most of these CDs I actually already had back when I made that first video, but I hadn't listened to them yet. So this is after I've already listened to them all a couple times, um, so I can kind of talk about them a little bit. I think there's only two, one CD that was that I didn't have at the time of making that last update. So in the past month, I've only gotten one CD. So started off first with Rakim, the 18th letter. This is the only um, solo album of his that I have. I've got uh, Paid in Full, Eric B and Rakim on CD, and then I've got uh, Follow the Leader on my computer. Um, this one was really good though. I was not, I didn't know exactly what to expect, you know, because it's not like I'm not used to him without Eric B, but very good. I mean, here, let me show you a uh, track list. Oh yeah, most of these I bought used. So you can see I bought this used, where is it? Uh, right there. So, it was not even $5. But, um, right there, those three songs. Those three songs were really good. I like those three in a row. Um, the thing I love about Rakim is that dude can just rap. Seriously, man, he's just, he's got such a good flow. He's got, he has a good voice, and he's just got bars for days. Um, lots of quotables on that, just like all of his other projects and everything. This one is A Tribe Called Quest, the Anthology. This is like their greatest hits. I think this was in like 99. Yep, yeah, 99. This one I actually bought new. I don't know why they put that stupid tag on there, but it was new when I bought it. It's still shrink wrapped. Um, I actually bought this one on accident because I thought it was their first album. Um, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, something travels of people and rhythm and I forget what it's called um, but it has that song I left my world in El Segundo and so I thought this was that album and I mean I was kind of it was whatever but it was an accident I actually did like this though even though I've heard most of the songs on it um, always good to have a track called quest in your collection gym class heroes this isn't like really hip-hop it's kind of like alternative hip-hop maybe um, with like some rock because it's like I think they use I don't remember if it was this one or not but one of I think this one has live instruments unless that was their first album that I had of theirs but it was still really cool I like this one um, Travis had some really good lines in here it was pretty funny um, I like his lyrics because they're funny but at the same time it's like true to him I think anyways I don't really know but uh, you kind of see the Sloppy Love Jingles, those ones were really funny. Um, the Queen and I, that was a good song. Where was that one? Biter's Block right there, number 10. Biter's Block was really good. I like that song. But the whole album was pretty good. Um, there were some songs that were just a little bit too out there for me personally, but I do like I do like their, uh, their style. It's cool. Sorry, I'm kind of not focused. I'm listening to Eminem right now. So. Uh, KRS-One, Return of the Boom Bap. Classic right here. I've actually, this is the first time I heard it. Um, first time I've ever seen it in a store, actually. This one right here, that very first real song, Out of Here. I love that song. That one and I Can't Wake Up. Um, there's so many, there's so many, like, songs in here that you hear little bits and pieces that have been sampled throughout other people's music throughout the years. That's what's so cool. Like, same with Rock Him um, and this too. You'll see this in a second. Gangstar. I got a few old school hip hop albums in this update, but um, it's just really cool when you get to hear kind of where those samples originated from. Especially, I can't wake up. Um, that that dreaming. That part has been sampled in so many songs. Um, also, which one of these was it? I forget what song it was, but uh, shit, what was? It? He said something about like New York, but the way he says it, I can't remember exactly. What, oh, the watch out, we run New York. Yeah, that 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 sample. I forget what song that's on though on that album, but it was a really good album. I like that man. That was that's just hip. That's just good hip hop right there. That doesn't even get old, man. I could listen to that every day. Um, I won't, but I could. Gangstar. 
Moment of truth. This is their first actual CD that I have, but it's the third album that I've listened to. And I gotta say, this one's my favorite. Even though I accidentally bought the clean version of this album, it's not even the explicit version, which I didn't even notice until I was like halfway into the album. Because the way they do it is a lot of like the cuss words and stuff, they'll just like scratch instead of saying the word or instead of like um, playing it in reverse like a lot of albums will or just blanking it out. It'll like scratch, so they kind of like incorporate that into the sound. So it kind of sounds like it's part of the song until you get to the points where it's like, all right, you know they're cussing a lot. Like, especially in like guest features, like Guru doesn't cuss a whole lot. It's mainly like the guest features where you can really tell that, okay, they're cussing right now and they're editing it out. But um, still, I really like this. I, dang, I'm probably gonna have to buy this um, explicit version whenever I find it in the store again. But I bought it used and I just, I didn't even think to look for a parental advisory sticker. I just, I always just assume everything is explicit, but it's not. Um, you know my Steez, that one's a freaking classic. Um, there's so many, there's a lot of good features on here too. That's what I liked. It's kind of hard to see, but it's Big Shug, Freddie Fox, MOP is on there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you can see a little bit Scarface. Such a good album, though. I mean, everything, the beats from DJ Premier, the rhymes, Guru, just everything about this was so awesome. I loved it. Um, right here, Eminem, the Marshall Mathers LP2. That's what's playing in the background. This was... I don't even know. It's... I'm not quite sure how to feel about this one. I mean, I've had it for like a month now. I listen to it every single day, but it's hard because it's like the very first, like the first Marshmallow's LP, that's my favorite album of all time, ever. I put that at number one. That's my personal favorite of all time. This is just nowhere. It's not even the same category. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's a totally different sound to it. It's hard for me to really accept it for being a sequel because it doesn't feel like a sequel at all. I mean, the first one was just so raw. There's just so much emotion and so passionate. This one is just like technical rhyme skill. And then just like, I don't know, like the topics, the things that he talks about on this album aren't really all that impressive to me. I mean, he had the one, like Headlights and Legacy, or the two, here, let me show you the track list here. Headlights and Legacy were the two like uh, kind of like emotional type songs. So Legacy was kind of like talking about his childhood. Headlights was kind of a song about his mom. Um, although not like how he normally does it. It wasn't like a hating, like a hatred kind of song. It was actually showing respect to her. Um, and then you had, uh, what was the other one? Oh, Stronger Than I Was, which was really weird. It was like him singing the whole time. And what I saw in Rap Genius was it was actually supposed to be from like Kim's perspective. Although it never says that anywhere, it never really indicates that. So that one's just a really weird song. I'm not, I don't really like listening to that song. It's just kind of weird. Um, Bad Guy, number one, that one was like the sequel to Stan. So it was like Stan's brother coming back and like killing Eminem for, for what he did to Stan. So that one was actually really well done. I really liked that. And then there was just, um, just kind of like normal hip hop rhyming kind of songs, you know, Rhyme or Reason, Berserk, So Far, uh, Brainless, which is what's on right now, um, Rap God, of course, which to me is like the highlight of this album, Rap God, but I don't know, overall it just doesn't feel like a sequel at all, I would have been much happier with this album if he just named it something else, honestly. If it was just a totally, if I didn't have the mindset that I'm about to listen to the Marshall Mathers LP when I listened to this, I feel like I would have appreciated it more, but being that he acts as if it is a sequel and then doesn't really match that up with the lyrical content and emotions, it's just hard for me to really like this album, but I do still like it. Um, and of course that deluxe, this is a deluxe version. Which I actually liked all of the deluxe songs. I thought they were all good. Baby was crazy. Um, lyrically, like in the flows and everything. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I like the album, but it's nothing great. It's nothing incredible or anything. I just... 
Oh, here it goes in the background. Okay, let me change this song real quick because I'm not listening to this. And last, but of course not least, is Big L, Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous. It's been way too long since I've had this... Well, it's been way too long and I've not had this album. I don't know how to phrase that. Anyways, I've been collecting CDs for too long and not had this album that whole time, all right? This album is incredible. I love it. This is one of like the grimiest sounding albums I've ever heard. It just sounds, it just sounds like just, there's so much hunger in it. I mean, everything from the production, like the production's not even like good from like a, a I don't know, like if you're listening to it, it doesn't sound like what you would expect to hear on like a mainstream release or anything like that. It sounds like amateurs kind of produced it, but it works. It really works for this because it just sounds like that low quality, hungry, grimy type of, of uh, East Coast hip hop from like the 90s. And I mean, that's what it is. But um, match that with Big L's crazy punchlines, you know, the way he can paint a picture of kind of like that street life and He's just so witty. I love his bars, man. He's got the best punchlines. I can't even, uh, I can't even praise it enough. I love this album from the first track to the last track. I think my favorite is probably All Black. And then I really like the uh, Eight Is Enough and The Graveyard, those two posse cuts. Uh, but every song on here is just so good. <sighs> so good. I, I think this is probably my top 10. I mean, I don't. I never made an actual top ten list, but if I did, I'm sure that has to be in it. Um, I don't know what year was this made, like '98 or '96 or something, '95. And I still listen to this on a regular basis. I mean, fuck, that's 18 years later. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, yeah, 18 years later, I still listen to this at least once a month probably more um this is kind of one of those albums that i just know i don't have to skip any songs when i put it on so <laughs> put it on <laughs> anyways um yeah so i just i listen to it a lot but i'm glad that i finally added this to my collection it's actually not even open it's still you can't really tell but it's still shrink wrapped which i was debating just leaving it shrink wrapped but i think i might take it out um at some point i'd like to start a collection of just cds that i never open but for right now, I think I'll open it up. Um, yeah, I gotta get his uh, his other album too. Um, anywho, that's that's all I got for this update. I'm actually gonna have a I've got a blog and everything. I'll put like a blog post with a little more details of each of these albums on there. I'll put a link to that in the description and everything. So check that out for sure. It's probably gonna be a little while before I make another video. I know I'm horrible at gauging how long it takes me anyways. I always say it's gonna be like a couple weeks and then it's like a couple months. But honestly, I don't really know of anything that's coming out soon that I even want. So, I mean, it's pretty much just gonna be whenever I go and buy some more older albums, some more like old school hip hop or something, then I'll make another update. But probably won't be for at least another two months or so. Um, I'd like to have it done before that, but I mean, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not just going to buy CDs just to buy them. I mean, I want to actually like it, you know, get some artists that I actually like. So anyway, stay tuned for that. Check out the website, all that junk, stuff and junk. I'll put links and all that in the description. So check it out. Um, check out the contests I have. I got a rapper contest and a producer contest on my other channel. And then just some other off type of contests on a channel I make with my friends. So check those out too. And I will be back in a couple months on this channel with an update. And if you want to see what I've gotten in the meantime, I'll probably post some pictures and whatnot on my blog just in between updates. So you can kind of see like when I get certain CDs and I'll do like little reviews and whatnot on there as well. So check that out and I will catch y'all later. Peace. 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 Peace.